under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Honorable Mayor Ron Chaver. Here. Council Member Stan Marler. Here. Doug Sashow. Here. Allison Howe. Here. Lynn Anderson. Here. Lisa Northrup. Here. Kevin Lindell. Present. Okay. First on the agenda is a presentation on the background and history of consolidation of city facilities as a council goal. Mr. Glanmeyer. Your Honor, uh, as before Steve begins his presentation, I just by way of introduction, I just wanted to kind of outline the reasons for having this meeting, which was one of the main ones being to dispel misinformation and misconceptions about this project uh, in the community. Um, it's not something that came up yesterday or last year. It's something that's been on priority lists for councils uh, for years um, and several different councils and I also just wanted to kind of put to rest one thing uh, one misconception that may have been created by uh, an article in the Fort Morgan Times this morning that said there was not a public comment period listed on the agenda uh, that is true um, at, at every regular meeting of the council which is held on the first and third Tuesdays of the month we have an item listed as public comment and audi audience participation for items not on the agenda. Uh, this is a special meeting and there's only pretty much one topic um, broken down into several bites um, on the agenda. But that does not mean that public comment will not be heard. That will be at the discretion of the mayor um, under his ground rules and I believe his intent has always been to um, accept public comment on this. Um, first, we're going to have staff give their presentation about the history of this project and uh, some discussion among council and staff, and then I'm sure we'll get to that. And I did bring that up with Mr. Porter earlier about the present, how the public comment is, and that is typically for items not on the agenda, and that there would be, if so allowed, public comment. Mr. Glammeyer. All right. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mayor, members of the council. Uh, we have provided you with a rather extensive packet of information. I hope you've had an opportunity to review that. There are copies for the members of the audience tonight, so hopefully uh, those will get distributed as well. I've got a brief PowerPoint slide uh, presentation. It's about nine slides, so I'll try to go through that fairly quickly. It just summarizes the memo that I put in your packet that's about three pages. It kind of goes through history of this project back to 2012. I'm the new guy, um, and so, you know, I went back as far as I thought uh, was relevant to the project. There may be past history uh, about this project that I didn't cover, um, but uh, I thought 2012 uh, was certainly far enough back in the past to articulate that and show that this is a project that's been on the radar for some time for the city of Fort Morgan. So just briefly uh, in 2012, council held a visioning retreat in February and building uh, centralized facilities was listed as the number one priority under the infrastructure section. That uh, retreat had several different sections. I included the minutes in your packet as well. Um, this was a carryover goal from 2011 that carried into that 2012 re retreat. So I believe it was probably the city manager and maybe this council that directed the city engineer at the time to work with some students to develop a concept <laughs> report uh, about what that might look like for consolidated facilities. I included that entire report in your packet. The report uh, contains some concept design drawings of a consolidated facility that would include just about every department except for recreational facilities. Those were listed as future and proposed. Uh, this site was uh, identified as where Sol Naciente is today, so just uh, off of the 100 acre parcel that the city owns off of Linda and, and uh, Railroad Avenue. 
Um, so it included a new city admin or city hall building uh, that would consolidate all of the uh, city administration facilities, new streets building, new parks, and new utilities buildings for gas, water, electric, uh, sewer, and uh, inventory control, utility billing, all of those things. But it did not include the recreation center or recreation field house or any recreation facilities. It included a cost estimate at that time was $11 million. So this was six years ago. I think that was fairly accurate actually if you look at the cost estimates we're seeing today um, to build those facilities and, and eliminate the field house. I think 11 million was, was pretty close in 2012. So, so in six years, the cost went up from 11 million to 30 million? No. Uh, again, it didn't include a recreation facility or field house, and you have to remember the field house itself in today's dollars is seven million. Okay. So this included some land purchase and then uh, various other buildings and outside amenities, roads, parking lots, uh, landscaping, lighting, this type of thing. So the students uh, finished their report, presented that to the city council at a regular meeting in December of 2012. The Times did a very nice article about that presentation uh, of the students attending that meeting. I tried to include a copy of that article in your packet as well. So nothing happened for four years. Um, it just, the project just sort of sat dormant. Uh, and in 2016, Again, the city engineer at the time applied for a grant with the Colorado Department of Local Affairs to hire again another group of students um, to provide yet another concept plan report. Uh, the report in 2016 was not near as detailed as the 2012, did not include uh, cost estimates. Uh, the report was not presented to the city council uh, at, it, at its conclusion, but it did have a concept for a centralized campus to be located on what's now known as the Center Point Plaza property, the 100 acres that the city owns since at that time Sol Naciente had been built. The, these are some elements from the concept report. I included the entire report, if you will, in your packet, but it uh, shows the uh, centralized uh, facilities, new admin building, uh, all of the utility buildings for gas, water, sewer, electric, uh, new uh, streets and sanitation building, utility building, uh, outdoor facilities, and once again did not include any location or mention of a field house or recreational facilities. So then we get to 2018. That's where things got pretty extensive. I started in July of 2017, and one of the first things uh, on my plate was to, you know, begin to look at a centralized campus and possibly look at funding design for that project. Uh, we had a few meetings. Uh, council uh, held a retreat in February of, of uh, 2018, and the field house. Design was the number one priority of the entire retreat. And in the long term, 2020 uh, or further out years, design of aging city facilities was also listed as the number one priority at, from that retreat. So staff began to look at uh, uh, grant opportunities to help offset the cost of the design. In order to prepare the grant uh, application, we really needed to determine what we wanted to design. So we had uh, several meetings amongst uh, staff, talked about uh, various elements. Most of them were elements that were already included in two other prior reports that, that we've talked about. The new addition was the field house facility. Uh, which would be capable of housing multiple uh, racquetball, basketball, potential indoor soccer field, uh, senior center, community room, parks, uh, offices, uh, dance rooms, you know, weight rooms, workout rooms. This is of everything that you would see in a recreation facility minus an indoor pool. It's a pretty large facility when we started looking at it. And then again, like I said, all the rest of the elements that you've already heard of, 
uh, new city admin building, utility buildings, uh, centralized garage for vehicle maintenance, outside storage of equipment, heated and unheated, um, uh, possibly a central fueling facility so that all vehicles could fuel at one site. This is your one-stop shop so that when folks come to the city of Fort Morgan, they can do all of their business in one location. So we've been talking about since 2012. The only difference in 2018 was the addition of the recreational field house. So again, in order to develop a accurate grant submittal, uh, staff began to work with a local architect and construction contractor to develop some estimated costs. Um, we utilized a recently completed Windsor Public Works facility for cost estimates. And the cost estimate for everything came in at $37 million. That's a lot of stuff, $37 million. It included a massive 152,000 square foot field house which would allow us to have an indoor soccer field, which takes a lot of room. Uh, it would have taken over 20 acres of developed land, which is a quarter of center point. And the design would have cost well over $2 million. Well, we knew the maximum grant amount we could possibly receive would be exactly $2 million, a million from Department of Local Affairs matched with a million of our own funds. So staff was asked to refine those cost estimates to get the grant amount near $2 million. So we reduced the field house to 100,000 square feet, still a very large building. You can do a lot of things in 100,000 square feet of field house. We removed some elements from the potential design, the central fueling facility and some mater material storage bins, you know, for rock and, and these types of things for both parks and streets. We got the new project cost down to $29 million with those revisions. The grant was estimated, or the design was estimated to be right at $2 million. So we submitted that grant application based on those elements to maximize our ability to get the full grant amount. We presented that application um, in front of the DOLA board. Uh, on July 17th in Cortez, Ty and I made a very long trip for a 15-minute presentation. <laughs> but it paid off because on July 31st, we received a letter from Department of Local Affairs that we re received $800,000 of our $1 million request. We think 80% was pretty good showing for the city of Fort Morgan. We're pretty proud of that. So we recognize that we don't have $2 million to spend on design. We have... 1.6 million. So once again, staff began the uh, issue of refining the scope to see if we could reduce design to keep it within 1.6 million dollars. That's kind of why we're here tonight. We've already started to do that. We've reduced the uh, field house. I met with the parks and recreation staff and we've determined that we think we can build really what we need today in a 50,000 square foot field house. That saves us quite a little bit of money and yet still be able to design most of the elements that have been included in previous reports like a new city admin building, most of the utility buildings and uh, we still left out the central fueling facility and the material storage bins. We're trying to shrink the outside vehicle storage uh, of course, when you shrink a lot of these elements, you also don't have to develop as much land. We're down to about 10 acres of land development at this point. But we're still a little over the 1.6 million. We're at about 1.7. So uh, we just wanted to bring this, you know, history to you. And we can talk a lot about elements as we move forward with the discussion tonight. But just know that we recognize we're not building 37 million. We're not building 30 million. We're not even going to build $20 million of projects next year. This is a big project for the city of Fort Morgan. We recognize we have priorities and needs today, and we have things that we would like to have in the future. I think it's clear that we would phase whatever we do, 
Uh, when we talk about design, we would look to get final construction design drawings for elements we know we can build in the very near future. And we would look to get 30, 60, 80 percent design drawings for elements we know we won't be building for quite some time so that when it comes time to build those, we can finalize the designs and get them out to bid to build. And that's the history that I have. Um, I know nothing about, you know, how they price designs and everything as far as our architectural and engineering firms and everything. So why is it that, you know, just thinking how you put stuff out to bid, why can't you say we will pay $1.6 million to design this? Are you interested or are you interested or are you interested? Yeah, and that's exactly what we will do, but we want to say we want to design $1.6 million for things that we want and need, and we need a little direction on what that looks like. But well, the reason I was asking is, you know, you said, well, when I had an initial idea about the facility, then the cost for design and architect is, and engineering, I mean, is going to be too high. So you scale it mm -hmm. down, mm -hmm. then we get 1.6, so you're still scaling down. Yeah. That's the part that I don't understand as far as design and how that yep. the size of it is actually reflected in the cost of the design. And you couldn't say, okay, we want to build this $100,000 field house with everything else and we'll pay 1.6, who's interested? Yeah, so the way we're, we're looking at that, Kevin, the reason we worked with our local contractor and architect is to determine it's really based on the cost of the facility to build. And then you take that cost and you take a percentage of that and that's what it costs to design it. So if you have $30 million in expenditure to build something, you use a percentage to come up with what the cost would be to design. That's kind of what I figured by the yep. way we were going. That's why I was going. Yeah, it doesn't it's a great exist, question. You could go, well, I know we want to build a $20 million, which would then be $200,000, yep. but we're only going to pay one point six. Who's interested? Yeah. But it doesn't work that way. No, you really don't want to do that necessarily. I mean, you want to give them clear direction on what they're designing, and then they will provide you at the end of the day with the drawings and a cost estimate of what it's going to cost to build it. So we've sort of worked that backwards, and we feel like we've got a good handle on what it's going to cost to build these things based on recent projects. And then we can back calculate what it should cost to design it based on that percentage. What's the general percentage? Isn't it like five to seven percent that architects generally charge? Yep, uh, we used seven percent. Yep. yep, and so that's on the high end of that. And when we talk to our architect and, and construction manager, seven percent is the high end. They thought we could come in a little less than that, but we wanted to be conservative. In, in the building industry, that is that is very common. That's generally. Steve's absolutely right. Yep. Anybody else have any questions for Steve or Mr. Glammeyer? I Steve. want to thank Steve for uh, jumping in and doing all the research on this. He wasn't here for any of this. <laughs> like he Don't said, shoot he got the messenger. Here. <laughs> yeah, he uh, got here middle of last year and has done a great job um, kind of picking this up and um, figuring out where it stands, where we've come, and you know where we're going. And that's... Part of what we're here for tonight is to get an idea from council what it is we want to design. Um, you know, there's an awful lot of information in this packet um, about how this has been um, discussed and how city facilities need to be replaced and um, in efficiency could be improved by consolidating things. I won't go into all that. It's all in the in the packet, but. What we want from council is kind of a prioritization so that we can decide. Uh, thanks again, Steve. Stand by. Don't go away far. <laughs> um, number one, the field house, I think, was, was the top priority. The armory is literally um, falling down around the shoulders of the recreation staff. Um, and then I think the next priority, as far as staff is concerned, but it's, again, it's up to council, is the consolidation of the administrative offices. Um, you know, having utility billing in the building department over there and, you know, other offices over here, um, that's probably the second priority. Um, there are several um, kind of uh, 
price estimate sheets, um, one at 37,000, one at 29,000, and they keep going down as we've scaled back on items. But those, uh, those estimate sheets list the different elements, you know, like a streets department building. And um, so that's what we want council to decide is what we, what we want to design to construction drawing levels so that we could execute that immediately in 2020, meaning probably the field house at least. Um, and then what we can do without or what we want to postpone. Um, you know, it's been said that uh, the utility departments on the railroad avenue, the city complex, um, the electric building, the gas building, the water building there, um, could be left there and um, you know we could eliminate those from the uh, design and then that would save us a great deal of money and again like Steve said this is going to be phased we'll pay for it as we're able to afford it um, and you know what council needs to decide is what what goes first what we want to do next year um, well we will be designing next year what we want to do the following year in terms of construction so doing this design, does that commit the city to spending $30 million? No. No. We're, so we can, if I understand correctly, at any point in time, we can pick and choose which buildings, which projects we want to move forward with. Is that correct? correct? And what, what you decide to design to 100% construction drawings, you can do immediately. Steve was talking about, I think, 30, 60. Um, you can design them you know, halfway, not fully engineered um, to be ready for construction, but a good ways along so that they can be taken off the shelf and um, finalized relatively cheaply and quickly. Yeah, I think that's, at the end of the day, the thing to do would be to decide, do we have needs that we want to address in the next say three to five years that we want to take to 100% design and then allow staff to seek funding for construction of those elements. For instance, your number one priority is the field house. We want to get that designed and, and try to find a way to get that built in the next two to three years. If city administration buildings, and that would encompass you know, the, the six folks that reside here at City Hall, um, the complex that houses most of the administration staff, uh, the annex where, where Nelson and, and his team is for IT, uh, do you consolidate all those folks into a consolidated building? Um, is that a need that we want to do in the next three to five years? And you know, then you get that to 100% design and allow staff to seek funds for construction. Um, streets and sanitation is another building that's really falling down around them. We've spent quite a little bit of money on maintenance. We could do a lot more. We're trying to defer that maintenance. We have that same issue at the complex. We're trying to defer maintenance there. This building has a tremendous need for various uh, upgrades and, and we spend a large amount of money on utilities here. Uh, on this building because of its inefficiencies. Do we spend money upgrading it so that we can save that utility money? Do we look at another building? Those are the things that, that we want to look at. And you get those elements to 100% and we go out and we find money to get them constructed. Other elements like utility buildings, um, do we just get those to a, to a lower level design standard, 60% uh, perhaps, and have them available for future uh, final design and construction as we move this project along, you know, years down the road. What did what is the what do you anticipate the cost increase in the design process uh, if if we come back and decide to, you know, design part of it now, mm -hmm. and then we just you know to save money now mm -hmm. down the road was the anticipated increase if we change our minds or a different council decides to do it later on. Yeah, so I guess I'll address that in a couple of ways. Um, I don't think there would be much design increase if you took that 60% to 100% in the future. 
than what it would cost today, other than, you know, just typical inflation of architects. You know, everybody charges a little more every year because everything costs more. I don't think there's a much increase in cost five to six years down the road on design. There will be some, just from inflation. But the second part of that question is, you know, what do I think it costs if another council decides they don't want to pursue that or do something different? I think you're out the money you spend today on 60% design if you decide to go a completely different direction and basically throw those plans away. Mm -hmm. that, that's a risk, certainly. So, so what constitutes 60% of the design? Is yeah, I think you get good concept level drawings, you get um, you know, good floor plans design, this type of thing. What you don't get are the details and how you're going to build your your, uh, you know, you know, your walls and, and what type of roofing material you're going to put on and what windows you're installing and these types of things. I think you get a good concept level square footage drawing that an architect can pick up and do the finish work with later. Okay. So how do you do the funding for it if you're going to phase in all these buildings mm -hmm. and each building is going to be multi-million dollars mm -hmm. a piece? Great question, and that's something that, you know, we've only begun to scratch the surface with, but I think that toolbox is large. There are many, many different ways. First of all, DOLA, when we presented this grant, said we will expect to see you back looking for some grant money to build these facilities. So I think that tool is already sharpened. We would go back to DOLA and, and seek some more grant, um, and they have, in the past, rare, funded more than a million dollars. I was uh, involved in a project in, in Delta where we built a four-lane highway and they gave us uh, in excess of five million dollars. So you can get more funding if it's available on a rare occasion. There, the other tools, certainly we have a bonding capacity, so you could bond for parts of this, right, borrow money. Um, we have a fairly good reserve that gives us a nice bonding capacity to go out and seek uh, construction bonds. Uh, there are public-private partnerships out there, and we've already been contacted by a couple of different organizations that come in and actually uh, build buildings and sort of lease them to you over a certain period of time until you've paid that lease, and then they're yours, so another sort of financing mechanism. Uh, and then certainly there are other granting agencies out there and we would just start to look and, and ask but you know I think city has some cash we've got bonding capacity there are public private partnerships and there are grants I think those are kind of the tools in that toolbox um, and we would explore any and all of those options maybe do naming rights and Pepsi wants you know and they give you I don't know Th there's just all kinds of creative ways that and you look for those and you do everything you can to seek them Steve, would the uh, idea be to w these buildings that we go to a lower degree of design, this, the 60 percent or whatever, is the idea to kind of have a conceptual plan for the campus, though, and have those kind of fit in yeah. on the master plan of the, yeah. the landscape so yeah. that it's, it all kind of fits together and it's not kind of patchwork? Yeah, you absolutely want to do that, right? I mean, if you're going to develop 10 acres, you want to make sure everything fits in the puzzle. And so if you build the parking lot in the first year, you want to make sure that the parking lot is sufficient to handle all of the future improvements. Um, and it fits within the site where you want it. So yeah, you master plan the entire 10 acres, if you will, and then you, can, you begin to put the Lego pieces in where they fit. Where do we anticipate the money for the ma matching the DOLA grant on the design? Where is that money coming from? Is that, um, can you just clarify for everyone in general, where did that money come from? Yep, so it's already budgeted and, uh, you know, assuming you pass the budget over the next couple of meetings, it's appropriated out of the capital fund. So that money is anticipated to be uh, available starting January 1 if the budget gets passed. And one other thing, um, just to bring up, uh, mostly so you have it in your thought process and everything, is I was approached by an outside entity 
who said that, and this was before I think even we really had talked about the field house, or maybe it was with the field house, but they said that they would donate, if, the, if we put in an indoor pool, mm -hmm. they would donate a million dollars towards okay. that. So just sure. part of your process as yep. far as thinking and looking at stuff and everything. No. I know a pool isn't part of the thing right. now, but I, and I don't have any idea if a million dollars would all of a sudden make it yeah. attractive or if you'd be going, oh, that's just a drop in the bucket. Sure. No, but those are the things that, I mean, as you start to do projects like this, you hear those things from time to time. It's not, you know, I mean, people do bricks, right? And you sell those and you make a little money. It's not a lot of money, but it's investment in the community that's to your project. And so you do things like that. Uh, one of the other tools I failed to mention is what do we do with the buildings when they're vacant? So there's possible funding source there. Um, you lease them. You sell them. Something of this nature, and that's funding as well. And you use that to help offset the cost of construction in the future. The, does these designs, um, say we get the designs and then down the road we decide to execute, but uh, the design is for a field house that's going to cost anticipated $7 million and you decide you want to cut that or you want to increase that, uh, what are the consequences? Um, are you locked in with the design that we get? Yeah. It, you're never locked into anything. It just costs money to change typically. So if you're at 100% design and you're about to go out on the street for construction and you want to add X indoor pool, <laughs> then you're going to go back and you're going to design an indoor pool and that's going to cost you more money and you would want to do that before you go out for construction. So that's, that's the risk. Um, when we talked to one company about the field house and we were looking at sort of a, a modular metal uh, field house building, um, they're expandable. So that's the other thing. While we may go down to a 50,000 square foot field house design today, we would look always at how can we expand this if needed in the future and try to design in some elements for expansion as we go. And so we would always be looking for opportunities to do that. And that's one of the advantages to trying to bring on a construction manager company early into the process uh, to help you value engineer in types of expansion capabilities and savings into your project. And we may look at that as, an, as a, uh, a sort of a GM, what we call a general manager, general contractor type of process to, when we get into the design. It kind of leads to a question that where I was going. So we talked about the field house, we talked about the city hall, the complex and the annex. Um, when we get to buildings like the utilities, or like the utility departments like um, gas and electric, and even the streets departments or the parks, maybe not the parks department, are those buildings less complicated to build? I guess the way I look at it is if you're building a space where you're going to have a lot of staff, mm -hmm. your complexity in walls on the inside, offices, electric drops is significantly larger versus if you're looking for a utility department, mm -hmm. a large portion of that is going to be storage for equipment. Right. Does, does it make more sense to have those be some of the buildings that we would do a 60% design on because that 40% is significantly, or am I simplifying it? Well, I, I think your point is well made that typically with a utility type building, um, the cost is less and it's primarily because of finishes, right? You're not putting in nice wooden floors and, and carpet and these types of things in a utility building typically. What you put in is concrete floors and you know while it might be nice to have the drywall textured maybe you don't care and you can save money there right it's a utility building for for our utility staff not that they're not important right <laughs> but when you come to a city admin building you typically have different finishes in there and they're a little nicer and you want the public to you know come into a building that appears to be professional and so there is a cost difference for utility buildings as opposed to like a city admin building just because of that, because of those finishes. Most of the design elements, yeah, we talk a little bit about the finish work in the final design, 
Um, and so you would get some cost savings at 60 percent that probably would not transfer to 100 percent or would transfer to 100 percent because you're not going that extra mile on finishes. So yeah, I think, and because those utility buildings are not falling down around us, I think they're the ones you wait on. That's just my opinion. I mean, the ones we're really struggling with, this building, because of just its inefficiency, and we got six people in here, and it's big. It's almost as large as the building we want to build for a city admin building, right? But the you know this large offices and large space that's underutilized and and these types of things and it's just really inefficient and then we've got a complex building that while it's got some some problems you know with its age it's also packed we can't fit anybody else in it we've got somebody sitting in the hallway in an office because that's the only space left and then you've got the streets and sanitation building that is also falling down i mean i spent a lot of money on a roof this year for part of that building and I need to do the rest but I'm really I don't want to because I think it's just throwing good money after bad and then the field house is your number one priority and an armory that I remember going over there with Ty down in the basement and they were painting the inside wall just to try to seal the water that was coming in right that's terrible so you know those are the things that I think are higher priorities well certainly go whatever direction you want but just in my walking around and looking and just, you know, observing what's happening, I think those are the higher priorities than your utility buildings. And where does the, um, and maybe I missed this, where does the um, aging parks department building fall into this? Does that, yep. um, I mean, there's been talk for years that there are, there are lots of things we could do with that building yep. besides, you know, Offices housing. I mean, I look at the fact that we have a streets department, mechanics, mm -hmm doing the same kind of work that we have parks department mechanics yeah. in two separate places, two different sets of tools, yeah. not being able to cross pollinate each other and share ideas and share jobs. We're centralizing that with equipment that is not a hole in the ground where we're having the mechanic go beneath the vehicle. We actually have the ability to have lifts and stuff. Yeah, you, you asked a couple of things there, so I want to I want to cover them both. So the the parks staff and and department would be contained within the field house, even with fifty thousand square feet, you can fit some really nice basketball courts in there. All of the other facilities you currently have, the weight room, the you know the ellipticals and all of those treadmills and those things, uh, walking track, um, a community room, which would also uh, you know serve to help with senior center um, which is another building that needs a lot of maintenance and plenty of office space for the recreation department and the parks department so they would be able to go within your field house building even with 50,000 square feet the other question you asked was a centralized garage question how do we get mechanics all at the same place so that we can utilize mechanics to work on all the equipment and have all the equipment come to one location? And at the end of the day, that's really, you got to spend a little money to save money. And we've got s staff going two different locations. We've got s citizens going all over. I constantly have people come in my office needing to come see John and they have to drive down here to do that. So we talked about a central garage and that was in the original design element. It's still in this design element. It's a, it would be a new facility for us, but we're replacing two garages with it, right? We've got one down at the power plant and one over at the streets department. Um, so that's another element that could be designed, a new building, but replacing two for that purpose. So I think I answered both of those. Yep, thank you very much. Yeah. Can you talk about the 50,000 square foot of the field, field house? Because yep. it seems like we cut a third off, and now we're talking about cutting another third off. And uh, indoor soccer field goes away. Yeah. You know, with the first one, what are we cutting with a? I mean, if we can fit everything that we need in the 50,000, yep. what uh, what was to be included in the 100,000? Right. So a lot of it was the indoor soccer field that took up a pretty good portion of it. So when we went to 100,000, we, we knew we were losing a portion of that. Not the entire thing, but a good portion of that indoor soccer field disappeared. 
Um, we took out several more basketball courts. We took out several, we, we had a, uh, a gymnastics room that went away. So there was just several different large design elements that were in the initial concept plan. Um, and so we've tried to consolidate rooms as well. If we can try to get, you know, the ellipticals and all of those consolidated with, you know, the weight facility perhaps, where you have them separated today over at the armory and utilize space better. Uh, a lot of times what you find when you try to f put a square peg in a round hole like we do with old buildings, you take an armory and turn it into a rec center, it's hard to utilize the space well. When you're building a brand new building, you can do that better, right? I mean, you design around your need, not try to fit your need into an old building. So I think uh, we can fit everything in when you start from the ground up. It's just harder to do going into an old building. But like you said, if we were to do a field house that currently housed a portion of that, if we were to design that so it's expandable, mm -hmm. there's nothing to say that we couldn't get a field house set together. Then continuing, I guess I look at what, I don't know if affiliated is the right term, but affiliated credit, they had a building they put a piece of concrete down and they expanded their building and gained massive amounts of extra square footage. So to me, I think we're not necessarily eliminating mm -hmm. the ability to have the field house of the future. You know, maybe we have, you know, other rec funding from somewhere else at a future date, but I think it gets us out of the armory, which is a necessity and it gets us some recreation facilities so we're not as dependent upon, you know, being able to jointly share, you know, districts. We have a good relationship with the school district, but I'm sure the school district would love if we didn't have to continually use their facilities. Yeah. I think that would be, I think that would be a benefit to both of them because they're busy, they need their facilities as well. So I think a key, if we go with a smaller facility has got to be that it's got to be expandable so that we can continue to add on as you know future councils you know deem appropriate yeah absolutely and i think that's always uh we're always keeping that you know in the forefront of our mind how can we expand in the future if we need it maybe the uh fifa organization shows up and decides fort morgan needs an indoor soccer field and they give you the money to build it we want to be ready when that day comes right um just for by way of comparison, I measured the armory. I measured a lot of buildings today, but the armory currently is 16,600 square feet. That's, you've got all of what you have there packed into 16,000 square feet. So we're talking about, you know, triple. almost triple that, right? So you're gonna get plenty of facilities in a 50,000 square foot field house. The uh, senior center's 4,000. So if you put a community room in there that's say six, or something with commercial kitchen. Um, you got plenty of room to do lots of other things still, right? And I think it's also important when we had, um, when we did the, um, we had the consultants come and talk about, and we had down in the in the city park, we asked people during our parties in the park, what is important to you? One of the biggest things that was important to the constituents was having recreation facilities. If we're not gonna go out and we're not gonna build a $50,000 recreation or a $50 million recreation center with an aquatics facility like they have in, you know, Fort Lupton. It's not just councils. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know we keep going back to this is council's priority, but it's council's priority because it's the community's priority. It may not be all of the community's priority, but there's a large percentage of this community who thinks it's important that we have a place for our kids to have to do things. And so I think that has got to be taken into consideration what the community wants as well. I've been, I've been hearing since I moved to Morgan County about the need for a facility, a recreation center of some sort in this community. And it's gone to vote a couple of times and it hasn't happened. We have an opportunity to make something happen, to serve our people of our community. That's right. And the armory is a complete Dysfunctional needs, facility. Thank you. <laughs> so. Well, I think most of all, most of this initiated in 2018 or 2017, if I'm recalling correctly, 
that the armory was a need to be replaced. The field house was going to take that replacement. It was my understanding that that 7,000 or $7 million cost, ex estimated cost, that $1 million DOLA grant was going to go towards the field house. That was the first and foremost, That's that was the priority, if I recall. And it's now evolved completely to to this. And you do have to consider if you're going to put in and phase things in, take that into consideration. But if you look back through these things, what brought it back up was the need to replace the armory because of the bats in there, its dysfunctional uh, usage for that. And that was what we had put as a priority was the field house. It's went from 153,000 square feet to 100,000 square feet and now to 50,000 square feet. And you're right, we do need our recreation department. That's the one part that is really taken a hit and needs some room and space for it. So that's the way I recall it. Yeah, that, I, I think you're right, Mayor, that um, at this year's retreat, the urgency of the need to replace the armory um, was what caused the field house to rise to number one on the priority list. But there has been discussion of centralizing, you know, as we've pre presented in this packet of uh, centralizing all city facilities right. um, for quite some time. And when we purchased the center point property, it was also pretty transparent at that time that we were going to set, set aside 25 acres of that for a new city complex and campus. And the majority uh, of it was to be for economic development and business sales. Correct. The other three quarters of the property. Of the yeah. But, um, you know, and now we're down to, as Steve was saying, we're down to needing about 10 acres to accomplish this. Um, and it will probably ultimately end up being um, somewhere in between. But, you know, I agree the, the most urgent need is a couple of basketball courts um, for the city to uh, have, you know, complete control over um, because our leagues suffer and, uh, you know, as Steve was saying, if we can fit everything that is at the armory in a much better layout and more modernized uh, stuff, um, that's, that's our top priority. But I don't want to lose sight of the fact that, um, you know, the larger goal has been on priority list for a number of years as well. So. Well, and that's what mm -hmm. came up too in our 20. I mean, if you read from page one of our stuff is our, our number one long-term goal was to replace our aging buildings. And I mean, I, I agree the rec piece is important, but we can't continue to shove more and more people into a smaller space that's not, I mean, it's not really conducive. I think we can't just, I don't know what, the exact, what I'm trying to, exactly what my words is. We just, I think we Kick need to have staff. The road. Well, we need to have staff all in one facility as much as possible, we're not doing ourselves a service by having employees running back and forth between buildings. I think, like I said, like I brought up to Steve, I think we're, we're losing economy of scale by not having our mechanics centrally located. I mean, we've got Travis running from the parks department over here. They're not able to help each other out. You're not able to utilize your resources to the best that we can. You know, we're, we're playing Jenga, or not Jenga, um, Tetris, with our equipment, trying to get it all into our existing buildings, you know, hoping that as we're backing out, nobody's bumping into anybody as we're, you know, having the other equipment. I think we're a community that is growing. We have to continue to look like we're a community that's growing, not expect our staff to work in buildings that are falling down around them. and. I think we may not get to that point of building out all of these, but there are certain, I wholeheartedly agree with the things that Steve brought up. 
you know, there are certain things that we can maybe wait, hold out on, do partial, you know, build partial designs on like where our utilities are, because maybe as we move out of a city complex, we can utilize that space better for some of the utility department staff. But I, I don't want to see us lose sight and be completely tunnel focused on all we're going to do as a recreation facility, because that that that's, helps our community, but that doesn't help our most important asset, which is our employees. Or we could just quit growing. I don't <laughs> think we go backwards. See, I don't even think and that's, then we wouldn't have so many extra. See, and staff. I don't even think that's funny because I think <laughs> that is a. I you know I, seriously, I think we look at. We have spent so much time and energy looking at economic development for this community and wanting this community to grow. And there may be people in the community who don't want our community to grow. We know there are people, but. But, I mean, our community is vibrant. You know, we've, we've got aloe here, we've got, you know, we've got gigabyte, you know, service. We have the opportunity to continue to develop and grow this community. We just have to not lose sight, you know, because we're afraid, we're afraid to move forward. So. Well, I, I don't. <laughs> Look, I'm not one to sit back and just say, hey, let's let's wait, let's wait, let's wait, because everything we do is going to get more expensive and it's going to start continually, the cost is going to raise. My fear is that we are going to start, we're so worried about money that we're, we went from a humongous building with an indoor soccer facility, which soccer is the number one recreational sport in Fort Morgan and is by far our largest, a lot bigger than volleyball, a lot bigger than basketball, a lot bigger than baseball and t-ball. Soccer is the number one party. So I cringe when I hear that we're just eliminating the indoor soccer facility altogether because I guarantee that if there was an indoor soccer facility, that would get used more than the basketball courts. So I, I cringe when I hear that we're sitting there just because we're worried about money and we're, we're saving, we're cutting costs, that we're just automatically the first thing to go is soccer. That's our biggest sport. So why are we just eliminating that But right now off the bat? Uh, the Armory isn't, I mean, if you get a five-on-five five game in basketball right now, it's too much in that building. So it's still 16,000 square feet. So how much? How many kids are we talking about for 50,000? What, what, how many basketball courts? Is that one? Is that two? That's still not enough. So what, what are we looking at here? If we're going to be spending the money, we need to go and take care of the thing that is going to be the most important. And to me, the, we're not getting a recreation center with the – indoor ice rink that was proposed back in 2006, whatever that was, uh, we, we're going to focus on a field house that can provide <coughs> most things for the most people. Um, just to uh, address your question about courts, I think if inside the 50,000 square feet we'll be able to fit three, maybe even four courts. Um, full court? Full courts, high school size basketball courts, 100 feet long, 50 feet wide. Um, right now, what was our court today like 60 feet long and 30 feet wide um, it seems like when 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 we were approached and we were asked to try to downsize um, talking with Steve and the coordinators at the rec center we have pretty good soccer fields we can accommodate for the most part during the good season soccer where we struggle is basketball volleyball in the winter time we don't because we run out of space with the school district so basketball courts became a priority. I think Clint's right, soccer's huge. And I guarantee if we had an indoor field, it'd probably be used all the time. I've witnessed it in other communities as well. Up, uh, you know, by Windsor, there's that indoor facility and they're going all day long in that place. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe you redesign that whole deal. I don't know. Well, I can tell you that as a parent of a child that had to play soccer and it was snowing. Right. And the other three week that's because three weekends had already been canceled because of snow. It, the soccer season wasn't that fun outside this year. Right. I mean, and I think if you ask most parents, I mean, as much fun it is bundling a four-year-old up in as much snow gear as possible, <laughs> they, the soccer skills with the soccer game wasn't that right. much fun. Well, and I, I think, you know, initially the design um, – Square footage wise was for like a full size adult size gigantic soccer field, which I know nothing about. But I can tell you the one, the indoor one that I've witnessed at the Choice facility in Windsor is not a full size. It's an indoor 
it's more like a hockey rink and right. they actually play off the wall. So there's a lot of vari variations to indoor soccer and that could be a possibility where maybe, you know, the 5,000 square feet that you have for an auxiliary gym becomes, you know, a rubberized surface that can be a multi-use court where you can play indoor soccer as well as when all three basketball courts are going on with youth basketball, there's a place where people can shoot hoops if they're just dropping in. It wouldn't be the same ideal surface as a true basketball court, um, but it would be a multi-use type thing. Or you can you know, look at turf again, but h how far do we want to take that soccer element? So I just, it's a good point. I mean, I soccer's huge. The options need to be there. Yeah. And the indoor soccer fields I've seen are a lot smaller. They're bigger than a basketball court, right. but there's not the full. Right, and I think I think possibly when the initial square footage was talked about, the 150,000 square feet. I mean, we were talking about an indoor soccer arena, professional size, which I don't think we need personally. Okay. Um, I know when we met with the one like manufactured building people. I mean, we talked about that a lot, like if you were to add on a facility on this side of the original facility you would design the walls differently so it could be added on and opened up so that would be one element you might look into the future is you know if we're starting with 50,000 square feet but we need to add another 10 later on for soccer where do we place that next to the building so hopefully that helps thanks steve do we know um how big the uh, field house would have to be would it have to be the 150 or could it be the 100 and still accommodate at least a youth sized soccer field that's probably a better question for ty or steve <laughs> i don't know anything about oh. soccer i don't have kids i've never played soccer so <laughs> i don't know how big a soccer field should be honestly sorry um just keep yeah. dancing he's coming yeah <laughs> okay yeah i'm sorry sorry uh, I don't even watch soccer on TV, so. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm a football you guy. spell soccer. <laughs> I like football and basketball. I can spell soccer, I think. <laughs> Two C's, I believe. I don't know. This is just a total scratch pad, but I don't know, I don't know if this is a full-size soccer field or not, but I've written down 350 feet by 200 feet for a soccer field. Yeah, I think it's 120 like yards long, 120 bigger high school football field. What was that, Clint? So that I think it's 120 yards long for a soccer field. It can be up to that big. Because uh, they play on football fields, correct? I mean, soccer. Right. So a 100-yard football field is 300 feet. Right. So I think. And how wide is a football field? 53 yards. So that's a, probably about what I have written down. Huh? Yep. But you don't need that for. I think, I, you know, I, I think there's a lot of variations on indoor <laughs> soccer. Indoors. indoors is typically not 11 on 11. It's usually 6 on 6, 5 on And they play it off the wall. Right. Because it doesn't go out of bounds. Smaller mm -hmm. goals. That's it's fun. almost like indoor hockey. The, the, the one in Windsor is, I mean, it's like indoor hockey. They're <laughs> ricocheting off the walls. It's pretty fun to watch, actually. So I think what we're saying is we would like one of those. <laughs> in the field house. <laughs> well, I think it comes down to the recreation center has been voted down twice. Our recreation department is dilapidated and the building does not meet the needs of the recreation department. And the field house was brought up because <laughs> of the need for the kids in the community to have a place to go to. To me, that is probably the first and foremost of what would need to be addressed. Um, the rest of this can be looked at at a later date, phased in, um, figure out how you're going to come up with the fundings for it. Um, what are you going to do with the buildings that you're vacating um, as everybody knows we do have a substantial amount of vacated buildings throughout our community main street um, i've asked that question from the very beginning tell me what we're gonna what what are the utilization of 
these buildings that you want to vacate. Uh, but I think we have to tell staff what we want to vacate, which I don't think we've done. I mean, if we're saying we're going to vacate the city complex, I mean, to me, I, th I, would, uh, I would agree with you. I think we need to design 100% the field house. But I think we need to 100% design the consolidated building that they talked about with City Hall, the complex, and the annex. I think the rest of it can be scaled down and can be designed, you know, to 80%, 60%. Maybe it's all of it, all the rest of it is 60%. And we figure out where that lies in with the $1.6 million. And well, that's, that's my two cents, I think. You know, we have $800,000 that we have to match in order to use the grant money. So we would be farsighted to not utilize that. So I think that's way more than we need to design. Am I correct? Steve, that's way more. You can just shake your head. <laughs> way more than we need to design a field house. <clears throat> $1.6 million is probably significantly more than we need to design a field house that's a uh, yeah. Building. Yeah. I, I, yes. The answer to your question is yes. It's significantly more than you need to design just the field house. What, what do you think we can design and to what level? I think you could easily design to 100% construction level drawings the field house, the admin building, and the streets and sanitation building, and design the rest of the buildings at like a 60% level for one point six million dollars. What size what what size field house would that be? Fifty thousand square foot. So if you wanted to go larger than that, um, you know, we can play with the numbers. And I think you could um, you know, it, it's what size do you want is the question. At the end of the day we're just that's why we're here. Because I'll be honest, I think if whatever we build, mm -hmm. whatever we choose to design and mm -hmm. we build, the odds of that expanding mm -hmm won't happen in my lifetime. Okay. All right. Well, I hope that's not the case. I mean, I hope we are setting, we're setting this up for future, for future councils to have the ability to expand. So I would hope that this, that would I mean, this was case. an issue that got brought up to ballot and uh, for the rec center in 2000 and 2006. We're still here in 2018 talking about it with the armory. Well, hopefully we're getting smarter. Well, the thing is we have an opportunity to affect that change. We have the means and the capacity to make it happen. Uh, we don't have to take it uh, to a vote. We've been very responsible with the monies that the city has. They, these are needs. These are not wants, um, except maybe on some of the things in the field house, but there are real needs in this city, and, uh, and we can make it happen instead of just talking and talking and talking and nothing gets done for 16 years. I think the need is the field house. Some of the other ones can be held back. That's I, I, my opinion. I agree. I, I think the need is the field house. I think the wants are the everything else. Well, and just like Steve was talking about, the ones that you think are wants that we may be looking at in the near future, you design those to 100%. So they'd be ready to go but like i said i still think that with what we're doing now really looking at uh, the field house is the i agree top priority i think that's been pretty well established i, I think we're there on the field house and i think we should design that to 100 percent well and i think what steve proposed going 100 percent with the administration building and the streets department also makes sense um, we have this grant money, we need to use it, we need to tell, we need to put this out to bid for design relatively soon. We have to expend the money by end of next year. And, uh, you know, doing this would be the first step toward having that field house built, um, conceivably in 2020. Um, if we decide we're only going to do the field house, um, we are not going to utilize the full grant money. The administration building, it, the, the city complex is not a wel welcoming building. You go in the front door and it's utility building. There's a small lobby there. 
you go in the back door and you're lucky not to bump into somebody at the building department counter on your way wherever you're trying to go. Um, and it's a rabbit warren in there. It's packed with people. People are crammed into little offices. Um, we need a uh, modern, professional uh, office building for the city administrative departments. That's my take on it. And I think what Steve proposed makes a lot of sense. Um, and uh, but again, it's it's up to the council, and you know maybe it's time to let some of these folks have a say on what they think. But um, we need to get it nailed down and be able to take this out for bid for design pretty soon. I I agree with you 100% with that, and utilize the money we got for the grant and our match that's required. Do the needs do what is needing replaced. We've got other buildings. I haven't heard one single comment made about a senior center. We throw paint in the senior center, throw some car flooring down. I mean, there's another aspect of a need in our community. Um, we're all gonna be there sooner or later. That's a forgotten part of this whole gamut. Um, I, th I think Steve mentioned that that could be included. Mm -hmm. uh, could you know. be. I haven't seen anything in any of this that mentions a, a senior center. Yeah, I just want to clarify, though, that's that would be a critical element in the field house is a community room slash senior center with a commercial kitchen. And that fits within certainly the 50,000 square foot building and any size field house for that matter. But yeah, that is, that is a, an element that we have always considered including inside the field house. Uh, that's, you know, why I measured it today to see how big it was. It's 4,000 square feet. And again, it's a building that's falling down around us as well. So yeah, I want to be clear that we, we do intend to have that as a component of the field house, 100%. So that's incorporated in the field house? Yeah, the 50,000, yep. yep. Is it a complete separate portion of the field you know, house? It, or? It, it, you design these however, right? I mean, it wouldn't be a separate building, but it would be a component of, right? So it's it could be separated off from the rest of the building so that there's not noise and and all of those types of things, basketballs rolling in, you know, this type of thing. <laughs> That's but, my point. Yeah, but it's not a separate, it wasn't intended to be a separate building that would be built next to, but it's incorporated within, so that it could be a community room as well, utilized in the evenings for, for meetings and various other community events that might occur within the community, um, and have a commercial kitchen so that you could have food uh, either prepared there, or delivered there, and utilized for not only the seniors but any other types of community events. But yeah, we'll be very clear that that is a component that was intended to be within the field house. And if I could, I don't want to put words in Steve's mouth, but he kind of mentioned, depending on this, the scope of council's desire for the field house, you know, it's right now at 50,000 square feet. If you wanted to bump that to 75,000 to make sure there's room for the soccer facilities on the back when, when he's saying playing with the numbers, then you just take those facilities that aren't critical and instead of doing 80% design, you do 60% design to make up those cost savings. So that's kind of the direction we're looking for is what is it that you're, you're needing? We'll make sure it gets done. John, have we talked to uh, the people that are going to use this facility to see what they really want? Well, you know, we talk about this and um, uh, the big soccer field, and maybe they want that plus something. I think it would be a lot easier to. Um, there are you know, people that want a swimming pool. There are people that want a hockey rink. Mm -hmm. There are people who swear. A, rec center would pass if we tried it a bond again today. Well, we all know what happened the last twice so well we got to replace our our armory that's obvious right. but maybe we should ask them what they would like in there they want five basket maybe we get our 150,000 square foot facility I, I I don't know but we have been asking that I mean we have we've had multiple communities we've had a recreation ad hoc community committee we've got committees that you know 
um, that Ali has worked with. We have lots of committees where this has been discussed. It was part of the party in the park. What kind of things are people? So I think we we have absolutely okay. reached out to people. I think those are. I mean, over the from from 2012 to to the present day. I think. Well, I know I was never asked, and I've been here for a long time. But I don't know if there's other people out there that are, you know, maybe they want 10 basketball courts. I, I don't know. I mean, because that was a big part of, you know, when we had the master, when we talked about master plans, we've had consultants in multiple times to, and we've tried to in community meetings, we've had them at a variety of different functions. I realize people don't come to those community meetings, but I think if we offer that and, you know, we are spending their money, it has to be spent. We got to build a new building, but it might be a lot easier to build that money if they're saying, "Yeah, this is what we want. This is what we need." I don't know. Maybe I'm all wet. I kind of missed some of that, so. Um, but I'm here to answer questions. I mean, I, I feel like Thank you. we have done a lot of research and had input. Uh, we had a meeting with a gentleman that runs a bunch of competitive soccer leagues the other day. He expressed interest in more soccer facilities. Um, he's looking at grant opportunities and trying to find land and things like that. So we were trying to work with him to help him out. Um, basketball is always an issue. Clint probably can vouch for the demand on the gyms in the schools. It seems that you can't get into the gyms anymore because there's so many groups asking for time at the gym. So um, that's where all that comes from. Sorry, Dan. When it comes to the final design process, I think to uh, 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 Mr. Sashao's point, um, how does that design work uh, with other, uh, with companies uh, as far as give and take and, and coming up with the final design? Because that may be the point where we not just invite people but recruit different constituencies to represent and be a right. part of that. I don't know if that's feasible or not. So I think, you know, Talking with Steve Glammeyer, um, we've met several times and I met with our recreation staff and we, we drew out sketches on what our dream scenario would be, what our middle scenario, what our high priority scenario is and kind of put it into phases maybe. Um, talking with Mr. Glammeyer, once we go out to bid and we have a design company, then we'll have a much more intimate meetings with them as far as designing the interior. You know, how do the basketball courts light out? Are there locker rooms? Are there restrooms? Is there indoor soccer? I think at that point you could really get the community involved to help kind of finalize what it is they want to see. Um, do they want to see more free weights, more cardio machines? Um, you know, one thing that I think everybody would love to see is a track where you don't have to go up and down stairs the whole time. Um, and can actually maybe get a workout going. Um, so I, I think there's still opportunities to get that input for sure when it comes to the, the design of the field house. I, I think that comes in the next phase. But I'm not sure because I'm new to this too. So. And, and I think it's a fair point to your concern. What we're looking at is based off of the demands of the community right now. Perhaps people aren't coming into the armory and saying, I would like to voice my opinion on the future um, by you know, saying this, that, or the other. But the fact of the matter that we have, um, I don't want to speak for the, the armory folks, multiple people showing up all the time wanting to play basketball, but they're mm -hmm. having this game, that game, or the other. So the, the demand is driving the design at this point. But I think it's a fair statement that additional input isn't appropriate. I mean, I'd, and maybe Steve Sampson could comment, but I mean, every afternoon, evening, we have a dozen to 20 kids trying to play basketball in the armory gym. Uh, when we hit the winter months and it's cold, miserable outside, then we have soccer players wanting to come in and kick the ball around in the armory gym. We've had conflicts in there. We've had to separate them and schedule different nights for each activity last winter. Um, so there's high demand for that gym space just as drop-in sessions, not only league play and so forth, and that's why we hope to have an auxiliary gym that's always open, that is never booked out for anything. It's just open for drop-ins. But um, Steve may be able to answer more of those kind of direct questions. But I, I know our soccer numbers are growing immensely. Uh, I think basketball could if we had the space to grow. So last winter we um, had youth basketball, and unfortunately due to gym space, each team only got to practice once a week. So you had 
parents trying to teach kids how to play basketball with one practice a week, which isn't very good. Well, it's, I just, it's Christmas time coming up, and you know, I, I don't know how the rest of you do it, but um, you know, I asked my wife what she would like for Christmas. I just don't go get her a vacuum cleaner. Right. Because then I'm in trouble. <laughs> so I figured, I've, I've made know, that mistake yeah. with the hair dryer before. So you know, we asked the people what they're looking for and what they yep. like. It might be a lot easier to yeah to get this going and and get the support. Yep. Give her a Christmas card with money. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, and I, I think you know we have tools now where we can start that process with the pool co surveys and things like that. So we can definitely move forward on that. Did you want to volunteer something? They said possibly share comments and stuff. It's weird because you have directors coming up and back and up and back, and I'm like, I don't know if I should go up there or not. Um, to answer a couple of questions, particularly Councillor Chachel, about what you've done. Uh, one thing that I often hear about is when you start into design concepts, a lot of times you have focus groups who then go look at design concepts and go, well, we like this, we like that. But again, you know, it's, it's a tough, tough way to look at because you go, well, I want this, this, this. Well, when you do, I want this, 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 that drives price, price, price. So you have to balance needs versus price, and we, we all know this. Um, but to answer a couple other questions, yes, with our limited capacity, there are times, especially now as it gets colder, we have youth come in and play basketball, and as you know on that court, a five on, we have kids playing five on five, and while they're on the one end of the court, then we have three other kids shooting at the hoop, and then there's a fast break, and then they get off the court. To, <laughs> it's a mess. And then you got four other kids who come in who want to play basketball, see that it's full, and then they literally just turn around and go out the door because they know they're not going to get any court time. So it's just a matter of it's an incredibly small facility. I recommend anyone to come visit it. I'd love for you to visit it and come visit the bats, like we mentioned earlier, and things like that. But it's an opportunity to create a defining community defining um, facility. That's I, 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 I don't want to take too much time, but the reason I moved here is because I knew this place had potential. I, came, I grew up in a community very similar in this size on the Western Slope Rifle. Doesn't have a rec center, doesn't have anything indoor facility wise. And I knew they wouldn't because they've been stuck in that same situation for years and years and years. Since, uh, closest they ever got to building a rec center in 1983 six years before I was born. So um, so I, I moved here because I knew we had potential. We have land, we have savings, we have potential to do something wonderful. So. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to open it up to public comments. First off. I will let you stay your peace if it becomes repetitive, argumentative, then we're going to going to cut it off. Um, I want to stick to the facts of this city complex, the field house, and I, I will not entertain conversation on things outside of that. Um, I would allow you a period of time if it becomes carrying on. I will ask you to cut it short and go on, depending on the amount of people that wish to speak. When you do come up, please sign in to the sheet or the little clipboard that is on there. And with that, I will open it up to public comments or questions. Hello. Hi. You all know quite a bit of my opinions already. Um, but I really am glad I came tonight because I was, I liked seeing that uh, where your design first came from, CSU, which they're good, but they're young. And um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna kind of just see what I saw here tonight. We were presented 
with the design. We, I've been hearing about this stuff for a long time and then all of a sudden it came and it was presented to us that it was a done deal, it was going to be this much, there was no vote of the people, there was no tax raise. So, you know, there was a lot of questions. And then there's been a back and forth on different issues. Um, what I want to start with is I totally agree with the rec center. I was very involved when the rec center was brought up to the boat the last time I worked at the senior center. No city came in to the director, Jane Perkins, or asked the seniors what they needed and what they wanted. None. That was not done. And they ended up trying to give them a room with a bathroom. No sink, nothing. And they said, well, there's activity rooms. Well, they have parties and seniors do other things, I'm beginning to wonder, besides going to the bathroom. So <laughs> then they didn't have the school on board. Um, they didn't have the needs of the school. They, and they, and they, so they lost the vote and it, plus it was gonna be a tax increase. So they, the school, you, you, to do a, a really nice rec center, you have to get the school on board and the seniors. And it doesn't have to be, you know, like millions and millions of dollars, but the basic needs. We have needed that for the last six years. The armory was, was, um, was a Band-Aid, and we need that. We're growing with in our, you know, drugs and everything else. We need that. And when I was on the council, the street department was a complete dump. And I, I was appalled at what it was. And, I, and that, to me, would be... A, a pri that's been all along I, the priority. I do agree with the, and the, the, uh, um, the old power plant. I mean, that is a complete dump and that needs to be out of there. And I don't know how those workers have managed to work there. And uh, the last time I, I've been working with Jeff on that and I have I work all over with lots of communities and I brought him in a lot of pictures on what could be done with that power plant for an information center. We have huge traffic on that. So that building, there's some very good, and it's on the National Register, there's grant funding and that, so that's that. Um, what uh, what I, I disagree with now, it's very interesting, I'm so happy you guys have been looking into uh, Windsor. So. I'm the type of person when I was on council, I get to ambition, Ron knows that. And I have worked for 25, 30 years with historic <coughs> preservation and that involves planning. I've had, they sent me to, a, I went to a conference for a three day weekend. We had top planners from Park City, Utah. Look what that town is. And I took all of our stuff there and <clears throat> gathered up all of our potentials. We had top planners from, um, uh, I can't remember the names, we met in da da da, and it doesn't matter. Anyway, we had all these top planners and they looked at our stuff. It was a wonderful opportunity. They said, you're on the interstate, you have this, you have that, you, you have great bones. And that was years ago that I've known that. When I was on council, we had downtown, I've worked with grants, I've worked with all that. But, kind of specializing in preservation. Okay, so um, I went to Parker. When I was on the council, I went to um, uh, economic development, because that's a big deal with me. I went there, got in touch, this Parker had went to these things, they brought back, they had, I told Ron all this. And so then, I'm gonna go fast, but I'm gonna keep it concise. So I went up there recently, went on their old downtown, they built a whole, a brand new city administration building and everything. We drove there, I saw it. And it's right, they built it right next to their old downtown because this, it, this is a legitimate, they, and I said, and I called, I said, and their utilities are over here, their sanitation is over here. They're not all together. And they did that because, and now there's people that they have restored their downtown so their people are there. Okay, last week I went to Windsor. I went to Windsor. And, <clears throat> and I, I'm also going there because Ron knows we need to have, we won't, I won't go into that, we need uh, economic development plan because I'm working with some, some Denver de developers for Fort Morgan 
uh, on some of these buildings because of the preservation access I have. I mean, and, and so I have some really nice things going on. I'm excited about it. So anyway, I go to Windsor. Windsor is one of the fastest growing, well planned out cities that you could ever have. Everybody loves Wind Windsor. It's growing leaps and bounds. They had a tiny core and they've had excellent planning. So I went there. They have restored, I have pictures for you on Thursday. Um, I photographed the whole thing. They took me through it. They had, they had a, a school building that the city was in. They built this uh, kind of a rinky dink building in front of it. The tornado came tore off the roof, so they had money. So they, at that time, they thought, should we go out and build this uh, bigger thing new all out? They said, no. Uh, it's better to have the, um, the, uh, the administration building and their city hall downtown. It's a block off of their main street, and it is drop dead beautiful. So I went in, I photographed it. They have big windows. Their, their council chambers is upstairs. It's frankly not, it's different, but it's not as nice as this. It has the stairways. Okay. It's gorgeous. Okay, so I asked them, so there, again, you do, the concept that you have to take everything and put it together is not totally valid. And it <clears throat> isn't valid. We were busy here with lots of people, and it was chosen to put them over there and crowd that up. They, I took pictures of their windows. I'm still mad about that. It was on the council and I put in the budget to put storm windows. I took pictures, I'll show you. They have windows and they're big in that schoolhouse. They're proper storm windows that cuts their utilities in half. If you have a leak in the roof, what do you do at home if you had a leak in the roof? You would call a roofer to fix it. So this is the people's house. If you have a leak in the roof, you call somebody to fix it. And this, this is a, a substantial building. The argument to keep, the, keep it downtown is not my idea. And you can see Fort Collins, when they were building up their downtown, they built their planning department. They took an old building. They made that into planning where they have that. They have their city buildings right behind the street department. So we could get rid of our street department and move it out and you're eight hundred dollars i just feel there could okay. be more discussion and a little more and you guys really aren't together on all this either there's some other ideas that would help you to take a look at open up your mind and do some of the what other options are to maybe save this or save that or do that okay can i can i ask her some and um so you know i'm going to hang in here you I'm might down. have some Comments later no, I, paper, but. first of all, I just want to say thank you for coming. Thank you for coming and sharing your opinion. Um, I'm I'm disappointed. There's one thing you said. I'm really disappointed to hear that it had been presented to you that it was a done deal. And I don't know where that came from, but I'm glad that I'm glad that we were able from to. Well, story, and it came from there was no vote, and there was no tax increase. You offer you offer a rec center with no tax increase. It will pass tomorrow. Anyway, let's let's work together. It's vitally important where this stuff is. So that's my say. Uh, you guys have a big job. Open up. I don't think you're quite ready to do a whole design plan on putting everything together. When I went over to Windsor, the public works is over there. Okay. And then you get so big, you you have to find your way. Have you ever tried to find a doctor's office in a great big complex? It's hard. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Lynn. Thank you. And, oh, wait a minute. I'm asking for a vote. We would like to vote when you're doing this kind of a major thing with the city involving this kind of the money. I would like the opportunity to vote. I'm asking you to figure out. Um, you could go ahead. I know you got the 800, do some stuff with that. But before you start doing all this stuff with this kind of money, I think the citizens have the right to vote, so I'm asking you to put it up to vote in a special session next, next Wednesday or whatever. We need to have, we need That's to right. have the right to vote. Okay, thank you. Thank you.
I'm Bob Keenan. I lived in the community for a lot of years, <clears throat> taught some of these people up here. Um, and I'm, I'm not here to t give you any advice on what you should do. You have a terrific job ahead of you, and it's going to take a lot of input, as Len said, probably from other people. If I could get, do, if I were you all, I would listen to what she's saying about asking around and getting advice, especially with the vacuum cleaner idea. For that doesn't work, believe me. It worked for my mother, but it didn't work for my wife. <coughs> If I were you, I, you're already talking <coughs> excuse me, about making it smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, I would do, uh, take the advice and kind of keep it in mind. Don't start whittling it down now. Kind of take your time and do that. An old fellow, when I was just out of high school, working in construction, came around. And a fellow in the Midwest was building a house. And the old fellow said, build a house you can't afford. And you think about that. And that's good advice because you grow. And that's what your first thing you're talking about. What if we start growing? And the other thing I'd say, get into a, something maybe not the same thing that they have <coughs> in Sterling or other places. Maybe there's some new things you could put in. I've seen a few field houses, and some I've seen things in one, not in another. Nothing's been said about tennis. And what do kids do when they practice tennis? Play one another, and one thing they need is a wall you could serve into. I saw that at Iowa University, and I thought it was the greatest thing I ever had. People were over there banging, tennis balls into this wooden wall all Sunday and Saturday. Never seen it again. No place else. That kind of thing. Volleyball people need a place to hit the ball just to work on their serve. They don't need just the court. They need a, an area they can work on, things like that. I'm just saying, don't limit yourself to the way this place did it or this place did it. Be innovative. Do you need a full basketball court for all the people? Maybe you need a court with a bunch of baskets around it. And maybe a room something like this in size or several. Who knows? You can put a bunch of baskets in there and let kids just go in and work on their shots, their layups. They don't need a court to scrimmage on all the time. You need drills. You need a place to work on things like that. Other thing, are you going to do this with all these basketball courts and eventually get a district tournament here? Charge admission. Seating capacity. Roll out bleachers. I mean, you, you're just getting started. You think it's tough now. <laughs> Good luck to you. That's, and I wouldn't want to be in your, sh your shoes doing this. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. I'm Nancy Lockwood, as several of you already know, sometimes unfortunately. Um, I very strongly approve of the field house, and I approve the idea of the design of an administration building, but I would like to see you design the administration building so if your decision was to build it some other place, that design would work. Don't just look at it as being in that particular location. We have all known for years the street department needs to be moved. Maybe you need to look at moving other buildings like the fire station. Look at it very seriously in another broader view. I do think there's a reason to go ahead with the design, but I think you need to look at the design concept for the administration building outside of that box. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Good evening, everybody. My name is Corliss Littlefield. I live at 800 Walnut Street. I'm rarely, but every so often, will come to a meeting. I'm very motivated by the issues and the discussions you all have had today. My family came to Fort Morgan in 1919, um, helped to develop the city. Um, I really love, is it Steve? See, where is he? No, and you, and then the guy from, you're the, who are, you. Yes, yes that's Steve, but all of you. Well, I really, <laughs> all of you get to, are in that boat. I really appreciate the optimism statement that um, Steve, recreation Steve made. Um, I don't know where the idea came from that people don't want to see the city grow. My family was one of the early people, early families here, and it was all based on growth. So I think that every council person, everybody working for the city gets, puts tremendous amount of work into it. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. I'm here to say just a couple of things, and I appreciate the comments we've heard already. I didn't hear anything about the, histor the historic part of this city, which has my grandparents, my grandfather, and his um, brothers built the 300 main Farmer State Bank building with the idea of a lasting building. And I worked for Morgan Community College a great deal of my career. And MCC developed that building still to today, he uses that building in wonderful ways. Um, I would hate to see, and this is what bothered me, when I saw the idea of everything going out east of town and leaving Fort Morgan downtown even more vacant than it is today. And I did not see one anything about any other ideas except move it out of town. I can see where it came from tonight. I greatly appreciate it. I was involved many times at Morgan Community College on planning and on focus groups and on figuring out what works. I have never been asked what I think should happen. Never. I have never been at one of the picnics. I'm sorry. I have never seen a questionnaire. I get the Fort Morgan Times. I read it faithfully every day. I have never seen anything. I have never been asked. Um, I'm sure there are plenty. I, I ran focus groups. I know what that's all about. I've never seen anything about it. So I just want to say I'm sure there are plenty of people who would love to. And uh, you can work with that, and that's what people are saying here tonight. You can work with those ideas, and you can work with the varieties of people we have here. And I love the idea of the uh, recreation uh, field house, and I do not think it should be cut down. You've made great points for why it might ought to be 150,000 square feet. And I agree so much with what Bob said too is don't go don't go too small. We've done it over and over. Fort Morgan is going to grow and it is going to develop. It is sitting in the right place. You all, we're not in Holyoke. We're in Fort Morgan, and it and that's what I liked about Steve's um, optimism about it. So I would love to see more thought about the downtown, possibly some way to use buildings that are empty for some of these purposes. And I really appreciate all of the work all of you have done. And in this recreation center, whatever the word is, field house, I believe you shouldn't undercut the, uh, the size. I also think I didn't hear anything about art, crafts, sort of a different type of use, and that's where your people can tell you, does this make sense or not? I, I hear a lot for young people. I don't hear much for older people. Um, thanks a lot. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that's why we're asking you what you want for Christmas. Don't want money in Okay. 
Good evening, and thank you for having this meeting. This is just marvelous. This is what it should be. This is what city government should be, whether it's a school board or a city council, and I don't see county commissioners because I live in town. I'm Barbara Keenan. I live at 302 Grant Street. And like Corliss, my father came to Fort Morgan in the 50s. He turned down a chance to own an insurance agency in Fort Collins because he thought Fort Morgan would grow faster. Fort Collins wasn't much bigger than we were then. Well, he wasn't right, but, but it's been a good life for the Getzes here and the Keenans. And so I am here to say thank you so much for giving us a chance to talk. Um, I'm, you shaved. I am here to tell Kevin <laughs> Lindell that his wife wrote such a good letter to the editor. I didn't agree with a lot of it, but it was excellently written. It was well-reasoned. It was persuasive. She's a graduate of Fort Morgan High School. And there's a reason that letter was that good. <laughs> Just saying. And you tell Kathy that, too. Can I tell her that her grade is in the mail, then? <laughs> yeah, well, well. At any rate, um, as many of us, I live in, in what some people call Old Town and other people call the ghetto or the inner city. I'm a big believer in having a main street as the core of a city. Bob and I have traveled a lot, and I can tell you there are empty towns all through Nebraska and Kansas and Oklahoma where the, the main street is dead and everybody stops at Walmart on the interstate. Those are towns that have a heart that has died. I think this building it, it could be used far more than it is. It was a choice to not have people here and to move somewhere else. But I want Main Street to grow. And one of the best ways it can grow is to keep some of the city government here. I want a rec center. I worked on every one of those bond issues. <laughs> it killed me that I have a granddaughter. Had, we had a granddaughter who had to swim for Sterling. You don't think it didn't about wipe me out to have to yell for a tiger. I am telling you, <laughs> I want the swimming pool. I want, like Bob says, go, go bigger, but ask people. No, I've never been asked. And I, I'm pretty involved in community things. I'm, I'm around, and nobody's ever asked me, uh, would you like something to have with orchestra? We are a great music community. Nobody said anything in this field house about... Uh, as Carla said, the place for the arts, um, a place for music. This could be a real community center. Don't do it too quickly. I think people are angry because they thought it was. It is a done deal. We thought we, no one listened to us, nobody paid any attention to us, and I asked for, and I think you would be wise to, go to a vote of the people, or in some way, get some validation for what you're doing. Because if they say yes, you've got it. And if they say no, then you go to plan B and try to find something else. But you don't do it just because you've squirreled a bunch of money away, which makes people mad anyway. And in this kind of contentious world, especially right now, people don't have a lot of faith in government, and they certainly don't have a lot of faith when they think they're being hornswoggled. Thank you very much, and thank you so much for this evening. Thank you, Barbara. Council members, Honorable Mayor, I'm Jack Darnell. I think I know most of you. But several of you, I have encouraged to run for council. And uh, everything that was said tonight is great. This is the way council should be, exactly what you're doing tonight. It's a good learning experience. We need to pull the community together, get the in uh, information from the people. When people feel like they're being left out of the process, they become very irate, um, dissatisfied, and I think a lot of that's going on in town right now. And this is a good opportunity to try to pull this community back together. And I'd like to help do that. Uh, what I see, when I was mayor in 2006, 2004 to 2010, 2006 when we tried to get that community center through, where we failed at, we didn't include the school district, we didn't include economic development, we didn't include Morgan County, we didn't include, um, the college, Morgan Community College, uh, the Chamber of Commerce. Looking back on that, if you want to be successful as a council, 
as a mayor, our staff, you need to include your people. You will not be if you don't. If that's the only message that comes out of this tonight, we all will be better off. This town has so much potential. As mayor, I could see it. You got your own utilities. How many other places have that? You, if a development comes in, you guys can get your electric department out there, your gas department the next day. If these other areas have got to wait for XL Energy for a month or whatever to come in and develop, you have an opportunity. Take advantage of it. Let's work together in everything we do. I'm willing to do that. Are you willing to do it? Are you willing to do it? I will work with you. I want to see this community succeed. I'll tell you where the biggest problem at. I don't know whose idea was to have this tonight, but this was a great idea. Because the community right now is unhappy because that 1% sales tax went through. Then they see 22, 30 million, whatever you got in reserves, and they're not happy with that. I'm here to tell you that. They are not happy with that. And we need to educate the people. I heard the Morgan Times mentioned tonight, several people. People are reading the Morgan Times. You need to do stuff in the Morgan Times so people know what you're doing. Tonight, I had people tell me they're not coming because they're not gonna be heard tonight. That's important. It, they felt like they were shut down. Ron, Mr. Mayor, thanks for letting people talk tonight. Let's work together. Let's make this community great. I'm putting a challenge out to all of you. I will work with you. I have a lot of energy and I'll do it. Let's work together with staff and the city council and the people. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Hi, I'm Marge Kramer. I live on Saunders Street and I love 8th Street now. It's just <laughs> wonderful. And thank you to whoever made that possible. The back of this sheet has some very good points to it. Number three says, new facilities will benefit the citizens and the city. My request is that you ask the citizens and the city. I'm impressed as I can be. I'm major impressed with this whole thing. But don't you guys try to do it by yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Can you hear me? There you go. Okay. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and uh, members of the council and the audience that we have back here. Um, my um, statement, I'm Vicki Foy, first of all, and my statement is very short and very sweet. A project of this size needs to have the vote, truly needs to have the vote of the people. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Jeff Wells, live at 827 Maple Street. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity to get up and talk today about a project that uh, I've been a part of since its inception and appreciate the support of Council over the years to make sure that we're getting the things that we need in the city to best serve the citizens of Fort Morgan. A um, couple points I want to make that, that might be helpful for everyone on the history of this. Uh, we've been looking at this for quite some time as was brought up. There's a lot of questions, I think, that I've heard about why do we have a complex when we were only looking at 
a field house? And it's a very simple answer. Uh, council did say this was uh, a priority. Staff always takes that very serious and we move forward. But we also look outside the box and try and come up with ways that we can save the taxpayers money. In this instance, uh, if you'll recall, we went out to get a grant or looked at grants from various organizations that grant fund recreational things. Uh, GOCO doesn't grant these kinds of things. We couldn't get money from GOCO. We looked at other granting opportunities. There wasn't any grants available to design a field house. We knew that council also had a priority to look at other facilities. And so we said, hey, if it's gonna cost us about $700,000 to design, 500 to $700,000 to design a, a field house, why don't we go out and get a grant from DOLA and we could fund the design of some other things. I, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed and, and sad that people thought that this was a done deal. This has been an ongoing process for a long time. And I think council will recall, we're just trying to maximize uh, taxpayer dollars by utilizing funds uh, that are available to the city of Fort Morgan. So this concept of we started with one thing and expanded it is true because we got $800,000 that we wouldn't have got any other way to help develop some other facilities, which a lot of people have stood up and said, we need additional facilities, streets department and other things that are part of this project. So uh, I wanna thank staff, I wanna thank John, I wanna thank Steve, I wanna thank all of the hard work that these guys have been putting in to address some of these questions uh, for the community and for council um, tonight. Uh, some of the other things that I, I think uh, I'd like to fill in on some of the blanks are you know, funding. There's a lot of different ways to fund these. I think Steve did a really good job of uh, discussing some of the funding. Some of the things we haven't talked about are fees. Fees uh, that people use right now. We collect fees for use of uh, the facilities. We haven't factored in uh, what we could get for renting out this facility. You know, soccer is a big deal. On the front range, any indoor soccer facility is completely full all the time. So why aren't we looking at a facility and figuring out how much money can we make by renting it out to people that want to use it for uh, other types of things? And I think, you know, um, Lindell makes a really good point about making sure that when we put in uh, something to replace this the senior center, that it has more than a bathroom. The seniors do a ton of stuff. If you go over there any day of the week, they've got something going on and there are people there that utilize it and we need to make sure that we have that. And I think that that's really important. And I know that staff looked at that as part of this. You know, if you go into the senior center, the nicest floor in the entire uh, community in any building, uh, very nice floor. However, that's about it. I mean, there are a lot of things that need to be replaced and updated and I think we need to keep that in mind. But I, I want to make a, a, a plea to the community and to council that this really is about the kids. It's about the children, right? And we, we want to hear about what are we doing for our future. We've heard discussion tonight that maybe we need to put this off. We need to go slower. We need to take our time. We've got a facility that supports kids in this community that don't get to play high school ball, that don't get to get involved in the facilities at the high school and at the, dis at the school district because of whatever reason. Maybe their parents don't support them in that, but I can tell you I've been down there at night and seen how packed it is. And you have kids between the ages of 10 and 11 all the way up to kids that are 25 years old and they're all in the same space and they are a bunch of smelly kids and it's a small space and they start sweating and it's not a really great place to be, but that's where they go because that's all they have. And when council came forward last year and said, we need to build something to replace that, we knew we needed it sooner rather than later. The issues with the school district and conflicts with scheduling, it's not the school district's fault, it's we don't have enough facilities in this community. Council looked at that and said, let's get this done, let's hurry up. So we can put this off for a couple more years, but to the detriment of the kids who don't have a place to go now to the detriment of some of these programs that the Recreation Department is struggling really hard to make sure they're quality programs for a few more years. And as uh, <clears throat> Council Member Anderson said, there will be kids that don't see it in their lifetime if we wait. I think you need to move forward. Now I would draw your minds back to um, maybe high school when you were taking civics 
and you were required to read these things called the Federalist Papers. Um, I think it would do, good every, do everybody some good to go back and look at the history, the development of this country, and the Constitution of the United States. Federalist Paper number 10, written by James Madison, talks at length at the problems with factions. Factions, groups of people who have specific special interests that ramrod policy without it being tempered by the rest of the society. He said that direct democracy in that paper that he wrote to support the current constitution that we have now is not the most efficient or the safest form of government for the people. Representative democracy, as we have here, elected council members that make decisions based upon information brought by staff and input from the citizens, um, is the safest form of government to prevent tyranny of the majority or a reflection of policy on a small group of people that might have power within the community. I don't think you need to go out to a vote of the people. I think we need to follow the founders of this country, James Madison, fourth president of the United States, and the author of Federalist Paper number 10 and 51 talked about balance of powers and separation of powers. And we need to look at the government that the people enacted here in 2007 with the manager, council, or council manager form of government, and you need to make that decision. You put it out to the people, great. Does everyone vote? No. 12,000 people live in this community. 1,200 people vote. 10% of the people that you represent actually come out and vote on things that you're responsible to represent them on. Don't put it out to a vote of the people. The founders of this country looked at factions as a problem. And if we're going to abdicate the power that has been given this council by the people of the city of Fort Morgan, every time somebody wants to send it out to a vote of the people, we're just denying the ultimate reason why this country was founded in the first place, representative government. Now, um, old buildings, that's another thing that's been brought up. Um, I know that there are some buildings downtown that are empty, and I know that uh, we have staff that are working very hard to fill those. Uh, we also have to understand that those buildings are privately owned and they will sell or rent at the price that the owner wants to rent them at. Not a whole lot that the city can do for that. I mean, that's up to the market. But what do we do with these um, buildings that have great bones and have great history and are really a part of this community? Um, we have organizations in this community that are working very hard to solve some problems that we face, uh, rising up being one of those uh, organizations. Rising Up assists homeless people to help them get back on their feet, to help them overcome the things that are causing them to be homeless uh, in their life. They don't have a facility that's theirs. They can't afford to go buy a building downtown. They're helping people that have no money, that don't even have a house. They're a nonprofit organization. Some of the things that we've looked at or might be an option for council to look, look at is you donate some of these old buildings to these nonprofit groups that are providing services within this community, that would give them the opportunity to leverage financing to fix the buildings up and then use them the way that they need them. So I think that that's another uh, important thing to think about with, with the old buildings. Um, ultimately, I think those are all the points. And uh, I know I'm not under the, the, the timer today because. We get to speak our piece, but, uh, and I could speak all night, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, I just want to thank City Council uh, in closing and the mayor because uh, I believe that the leadership of the City Council has brought this community forward in the last six years to eight years in ways that it hasn't moved forward in the last decade. I agree with Mr. Darnell that we have a lot of potential. We own our own utilities, and because of that, we can go and and, and fight and represent ourselves to get the best rates in the state of Colorado. Um, and I think that uh, it's important for us to look at those strengths that we have and not think that we're not doing a good job. I've heard some things tonight a little bit negative that maybe we need to be doing a better job. I don't think there's another community our size in the state of Colorado that has the potential and is growing and has the leadership that we have here today. So thank you, Mayor and City Council, for your leadership over the past several years in moving this city forward. And, you know, I think you need to design a field house. I think you need to take as much money as you can and design the other facilities as far as you can and down the road figure that out. Oh, one last thing. Um, 
most communities that I know of our size don't have a reserve that is very healthy. Um, I heard some negativity uh, previously that it's a terrible thing that we have $20 million in reserves. The reason we have $20 million in reserves is because of the foresight of this council and the good management of the managers, not only here tonight, but the managers that run the day-to-day -day operations and all of the facilities. They don't spend what they don't need. And we budget conservatively. We have that money because we knew that we had needs coming up in the future. The 1% sales tax was put out there for streets to manage the street problem. That's a problem that had been going on for years. And uh, so I, I don't think it's fair to be upset that the city of Fort Morgan is financially secure in moving forward and able to do some things that other communities can only dream about. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> okay, we're done. So I guess we're at council direction to staff on elements to include in the design to be done using Do the Dola grant. So, I guess I would agree with Mr. Wells' comment and some from the others in the uh, audience that spoke. Um, I think Fieldhouse is a primary target to design and build for the community. The additional funds that are left on that grant would include what is available or able to be designed um, be able to utilize the entirety of the grant. Comments, questions from council, direction? Well, I, I think that's a good way to say it. I mean, do as much as you can. Uh, field house number one priority, but the other things, John, that I think you, the other places that you talked about, it seems to be the way. Uh, move forward with the design. Um, we can decide at a later date if we're gonna do a vote for actually building it or not, but right now, the issue is, are we going to spend this money and how much are we going to spend uh, for the design? And as for the issue of the design, let's move forward. Let's do as much as we can for, for the money that we have. Well, it's grant money. We have a match that has to be required. So we right. have the 1.6 that has to be utilized. Exactly. So. Exactly. Let's do it. Do the field move house. with as much as we can. And approach the rest of it with as much as, as we can, whether it's 40, 60 percent. Um, and in kind of the priority order we discussed, there are several we can take to 100 um, percent. I think we can do the field house, the admin building, and the streets. And, uh, you know, from that point forward, it'll be kind of up to Steve, um, you know, how to, to balance those things out and get as much as he can for the bucks. I would just suggest that as you develop that plan and and what is um, the phasing portion, what we're going to do, make it public. Give everybody the opportunity to know what's going on, what's being planned. We're doing the field house 100%. We're looking at the street department building, which needs to be redone. We're looking at parks building. Um, Keep it in the forefront, let the Times report it, and the Times report it correctly. My, the, just saying. Um, there. So, I mean, that's my point, so. I just, I just think my point is uh, definitely go forward with the field house. I, I would be, be open to the sizes and just looking at don't pigeonhole ourselves into a small area when we have the opportunity right now to expand and to make this something that is high quality for years for the next 30, 40, 50, 60 years and give us the opportunity to grow into a large facility. And I would think one of the things, sorry, 
one of the things I think that was brought up by several of the individuals that came up is making sure we are not um, being short-sighted at what we want to do with this, with what would be the senior center portion of it, making sure that that facility is accommodating um, for what a lot of those individuals are looking to be able to do. So we don't want to necessarily, I know we bounced around a community room, but we may need to be a little bit more structured and um, specific as to what that would look like. So we are making sure we are accommodating um, the seniors. And I think just being transparent and just being very open and allowing that if this is, uh, don't cut the corners and try and just throw things out. Be very open and transparent in the process so we can include everyone, inclusive. Bring up some of Bob Keenan's ideas. I mean, a, a wall to play tennis off of, that's one per, I'm, I, doesn't take a lot of room. It's a pretty decent idea and you can double utilize some of that space. So community involvement, Transparency, um, we work for everybody that is in this community and their input needs to be considered. And I think we just have to make sure we keep everybody on both sides, you know, being open and um, I guess I, I would challenge, I would do the reverse challenge, um, asking the staff and the council to be open and accommodating and listen. I would ask that the public be open and willing to listen and making sure that they are keeping their minds open to what we can and can't do, not necessarily what, making sure we're not factioning. You know, everybody, you know, I think if everybody comes to the table and they don't have their own personal agendas, I think we will be better able to s serve the community. And I think just everybody being transparent and not having agendas when they come to the table, so. Any other comments? I believe you have direction? I think so. I think so. Okay. It's videoed, so you can go back and review it if you need. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we said. Nothing else here. It's adjourned. <laughs>